Hello everyone, this is Fabio Lyon and welcome back to a new video. Yes, I haven't done a video in a couple of months or something, but since lately it's been like return videos month and mainly because of some great YouTubers that I'm subscribed to that haven't done videos in years in that case, since like Steven the Laggy Gamer. Uh, Aerodynamic is back, and lately, I think yesterday or something, I saw a video by Bolly Nick, who's done a return, a comeback video as well. It's been very exciting. Um, I haven't been on a YouTube break officially, like it's not that, ah, oh, I'm not going to do videos anymore. It's simply lack of time, and I've been lazy, to be honest. Uh, I don't have much t free time, I'm very busy most of the time, and Whenever I'm available at home to do something, it's either, I don't know, gaming, watching a movie or something like that, so, or watching an anime. Lately I've been watching a ton of anime, for example, since I love to do this stuff as well. <laughs> so the first thing that uh, was cut out was, of course, YouTube and video making, since these things are very time consuming, but I always enjoy to do it. And lately I've been uh, really enjoying doing the podcast together with my good buddy Leo and we have some great guests from uh, Alex Return to the Base, uh, Mario from Accident Gamer, RPG Fantast. Uh, really, really great discussions. I highly recommend you guys to check them out. I leave, I leave a link into the description below, so you, for all of our last episodes, so you can check it out. So I decided today, since I'm free this morning. I say, what the hell, let's make a video, and for some reason, probably because I'm an idiot, I decided to make a big one. As you can see, there are some empty shelves behind me. I decided to do a collection video, and more specifically, I'm going to show you guys my entire anime collection here in London. Yes, good idea, so this is going to be a long one, because uh, I have a pretty decent collection here. It's nothing too outrageous, but I'm very happy with it, and it's constantly growing because anime is something that I always buy. Yes, I buy the DVDs. I don't download or something or something like that. I'm old school in that, and I'm really happy with it. So I got a ton of DVDs around all around me, which it makes for a very cool imagery. And uh, I'll try not to talk too much about individual DVDs or something, even though I love to talk about this stuff. To me, as you know, anime it's one of my favorite hobbies together with like gaming basically. So let's just start it because I said this is going to be a long one. Um, and let's start from my favorite anime series of all time. I and mean, it's just a problem to start with that. It's a DVD box that I treasure because it's one of the first things that I bought when I moved from Italy to the UK uh, almost 10 years ago now. And um, Although this is North American, I guess, because it's uh, Region 1. Yes, it is. And of course, it is the Slayers. This um, box has all three the original seasons, so Slayers. Slayers Next, which is my favorite, so my favorite anime series of all time. And Slayers Try. This is just pure gold. Amazing. If you like high fantasy, 90s anime, you cannot get better than the Slayers. It's fantastic. And, of course, this is just the beginning of my Slayers collection, let's call it quotation for collection, not Slayers, because I, I think I own every DVD that has been released of this series, starting from the two-parters Season 4, um, Revolution Evolution R, which is cool, though not as cool as the original 3 series, and it's very interesting, I mean, I can talk for hours about Slayers, especially how, from season 3, the series started to diverge from, like, the visual novels and everything. But that's going to take a while, so let's just move on. And, of course, other than the series, I have all the movies. So we start with Slayers... Uh, this is the last one, I guess. Um, Slayers Perfect. Return. Great. Gorgeous, Premium, Special, The Book of Spells, and Excellent. Now, yes, quite a few movies, and again, as I said I think a couple of times, the movies are not as good as the series, even though I like them. 
Uh, and it took me some years to collect all of them because some of them became very expensive and I have to import these three actually. These three are here from Germany. So they have like in Japanese with German, uh, with German subtitles so yes. Way to go for understanding what's going on. Well, I mean, Slayers is not that complicated, but absolutely a treasure within my collection. As I said, it's my favorite. Slayers, it's my favorite series of all time. It's always been since I saw it in back in the day. Absolutely amazing stuff. Um, what do we have here? We got some um, other personal favorite series that were just like laying around there. Uh, we start with the fantastic Aim to the Top Gunbuster, the original, of course. Uh, this, as you can see, this is the Italian versions, but this is a phenomenal series. One of the best mecha sci-fi series you'll ever see. I still need to watch Die Buster, to be honest, like the, the sequel. But I'm kind of dragging my feet with it, but it's going to happen because this is just a masterpiece. Considering how short it is and compact, Gunbuster, it's... Amazing. I mean, we all know about it. It's such a famous series, but uh, I couldn't not have a Gunbuster in my collection. It's so good. And one of my favorite series of all time, again, probably this is top five material, it's the amazing Scrapped Princess, this gorgeous box that it took me so long to find something like this. Because I wanted to buy, and actually, I have to import this from France, but at least I was able to get this for a relatively cheap price and even though it has like French subtitles I'm pretty sure they wouldn't dare put an English subtitle in a French thing but that's not a problem I can understand French so I cannot wait to re-watch this as I said this is one of my favorite series of all time it's absolutely dare I say a hidden gem perhaps I mean I haven't heard anyone talking about this with one exception though a big channel but it was kind of shouting out less known series and Scrap Princess is just a masterpiece and I'm not going to tell anything about it because you guys have to watch it on your, for yourself it's just like 24 episodes but wow 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 absolutely one of my favorite series uh, where should we go from here let's move to some newer stuff or stuff that I still need to watch because there's not too much um, well, there is a lot, actually. The series that I'm currently watching, it's this one. It's called Razaphon. It's from early 2000, 2001, I think. It's a mecha show, as you can see. Um, it's done by uh, do, 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 Yutaka Izubuchi. For, like, general knowledge, I guess. Uh, this box set has all of the series and the movie uh, Pluralitas Consent... Cons Consensio, there you go. It was like <laughs> trying to say this. Um, I think I'm almost halfway there, and it's a really, really good show. Um, the interesting thing about Razaphon, though, I would say this is sort of a forgotten gem of the early 2000s. Probably all of you know it or something, but I never heard of it until maybe one year ago when I started hearing the name. I say Razaphon, what is that? Um, I saw some videos on YouTube, so that looks really cool, actually. And it's really amazing. I cannot wait to finish it. Highly recommend Razathon for all of you guys who haven't watched it. Uh, oh, now, this is interesting, because um, this is a movie from a series. I haven't watched the movie yet. Watched the series, really enjoyed it. It's one of the weirdest, uh, strangest, and unique series I ever watched, at least in the last... <laughs> 15 years or 25 years or something. <laughs> what, 25 is a long time, but ever kind of. I mean, it's a very unique series, and that is the movie of Utena, the Filet Revolutionaire. Uh, Utena, the Revolutionary Girl, basic, also in English. Um, I haven't watched the movie yet. Uh, I watched the series. I don't feel the need to own the series, but I wanted something Utena related, so I decided to go for the movie. Still need to watch it though. Um, to be honest, I'm not in a rush to watch something Utena because I watched the series recently, but I cannot wait to rewatch the movie. This is just 90 minutes instead of like, what was it, like 30 episodes, or even more maybe. 39 episodes, but uh, it's an absolutely unique show. It looks like a sort of low budget, uh, girly anime from the 90s if you look at the series, which I highly recommend because it's actually much, much deeper than it looks. It's 
as I said, probably one of the most unique stuff I ever watched, or at least in a long time, but I really enjoyed it. At time, maybe it was too girly or gay to me, but I didn't mind it. I loved the overall story and the themes and the characters, especially Uthena. I don't know why I say Uthena. Uthena. I mean, she's so, so likable. Really interesting and cool stuff with the revolutionary girl Uthena. The movie... It's called, like, uh, Adoles Adolescence Apocalypse or something like that. Um, we cannot wait to watch this. It's the complete collection of new Gal Force. Um, I'm not too keen on this specific edition, the manga video, because it's dubbed only. I prefer subtitles and original Japanese voice acting, but this was by far the cheapest option to me. I, I paid for this like eight pounds or something, and they're like three what movies or OVAs or whatever it is with Gal Force uh, instead of I don't know like 30, 35, 40 for each of the three ones. So fine, I don't mind. I really wanted to see Gal Force. Always known about it, never watched it, and I'm a huge fan of Kenichi Sonoda, who is like the character design of this, especially because I'm a huge fan of Gunsmith Cat and. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of its art style, especially. I cannot wait to watch Gal Force. Uh, what's next here? Um, keep this for later. Uh, incredibly, an uh, incredible the thing that I haven't watched yet, and especially this movie. It's one of the highest regarded anime movie of the last couple of years or something, even more. And it's Your Name. I've been. This has been on my shelf for a long time. I kind of forgot about it. And when I was bringing all this DVD together, I was like, oh yeah, I still need to watch your name. It's considered one of the best uh, anime movies of all time. It's like the new Studio Ghibli and stuff like that. Can't wait to watch it, though. So I know all of you guys, everyone loves your name. I, need, I really need to watch it. And usual siren, of course. That's the problem with... Because uh, Leo, of course, makes a lot of fun of my sirens all the time. And rightly so. They're always in the way when I decide to make a video. Because I can saw in our reflection it was an ambulance. It's, the reason is there is a big hospital pretty close to here, so and I'm living in a nice area but on a big road. And the thing is, during the day and the morning in particular, there are a lot of sirens. During the night, there's nothing unless it's Saturday night, so with all this drunken English going around. So next, let's move on and let's keep this on track. Next, this, I'm super excited for this. Uh, I bought this very recently. It's the, one of the latest things I bought uh, directly from Italy because it was super cheap on Amazon Italy. I got this advantage that I can use both Amazon UK and Amazon Italy since I can just ask my parents to like grab the item for me after I bought it and then somehow bring it to me here in London. So very, very easy. So I decided I always wanted to see this series, always heard about it, always been very curious for two main reasons. The... Um, the feeling because of the creator of the series and the setting, and that is Gun Frontier by legendary Leiji Matsumoto, the creator of Hot Captain Harlock, uh, Space Battleship Yamato, uh, Galaxy Express 999. I mean, the guy is a legend, and you got this series that takes place in the far in the Wild West with this Harlock and uh, Toshiro classic, like uh, say. Galaxy Express or Harlock characters and just want to show you the gorgeous art because Matsumoto art is incredible I mean just look at this and especially I love this in the back this is just absolutely gorgeous and the, the, the art Matsumoto's art style is so unique and gorgeous it's, it's unbelievable uh, let's move to the next big stack of these because we can actually go in through these very very quickly since I already made an entire video on this specific part of my collection, and that is uh, the Ghost in the Shell stuff. So just to be very quick about it, uh, where does it start? We got... Alright, I'll be fast, I'm not talking, because just check my previous video on Ghost in the Shell if you want to know more what I think about it, or some more history between me and this series. So start with the original 1995 movie, my favorite anime movie of all time. The sequel, Innocence, that uh, was released, what, like uh, 2004 or something, 
really cool because I rewatched it recently. Leo and I are supposed to talk about this sooner or later. Let me let me know what you want to talk about this, buddy. Um, naturally, got the standalone complex series, the first season, and uh, the second season or second gig, and the. Solid State Society movie that concludes the standalone complex series. Next, we got the Arise mini series. There are like four long episodes, and the movie that concludes the series. Although this has the worst title, it's a great movie, but it has the worst title, like the new movie. Just call it like Arise the movie or something. So we managed to dodge the Ghost in a Shell bullet very quickly. Glad for that, because there's a see, there's a lot of stuff. I can talk about Ghost in a Shell for hours. And speaking of Ghost in a Shell, it's the perfect segue for the Apple Seed series, since all are also created by um, uh, Shiro Mazamune, the creator of Ghost in a Shell. You got the I don't have the original OVA, but I got the three movies. So let's see. You got Apple Seed. Just made one. 2004. I thought it would be earlier. Really cool stuff. Probably my favorite, even though I don't think people love this too much, but Appleseed X Machina, which was directed by John Woo, I think. Uh, produced by John Woo. There you go. Uh, but it's... Then you got Appleseed Alpha, which... Was it a prequel, maybe? Perhaps it's a prequel. I, I don't remember it well, but it's... I haven't watched this trilogy, let's call it, in a while, but it's really, really cool. Very different from Ghost in a Shell. I will say, like, if you like Ghost in a Shell, they're very, very different. Very cool. And one thing that I like about Appleseed, it's uh, the fact that it's in very, very, very heavy on the CGI. Actually, they're entirely CGI series, which is very unique in a way for anime especially. But I really, really enjoy this movie trilogy. And I still need to watch the Appleseed 13 series. I just watched one episode and it started pretty cool, and I just need to finish it as soon as, soon as I find the time. Um, next, we got one of probably my second favorite series of all time. I'm a huge fan of this. Of course, it's Trigon and its movie counterpart. Or the weird noise. Trigon Badland Rumble. Amazing movie, phenomenal series. I absolutely love this. Everything about it. I can talk for hours about it. Let's move on. Because it could be dangerous, but I can do like focus episodes on each of these series so far, basically. Of course, how can I not have as been an anime fan for a long time? How can I not have this one of the best anime ever made? Cowboy Bebop, of course. Do I need to say more? It's just fantastic. I love this gorgeous DVD box set that I bought from Italy, of course. Because, interesting enough, Italy has always been very... Well... Always had a good anime distribution, somehow. It's weird to... Like, for example, in Europe with video games, especially Japanese games, we lagged so far behind up until basically the PS2 era. We kind of to recuperate during the PS1 days, but SNES, we got nothing. NES, even less than nothing, basically. But at the same time, during like the 80s and 90s, we got a ton of anime, which was very cool. I have no objections. But I think like here in Europe, Italy and France were kind of... I don't, I'm not sure about Germany, for example. I don't know about that. Or like Northern Europe or other places. But I don't think, for example, the UK was as lucky as Italy and France in terms of like uh, distribution and publications of anime during back in the day but I might be wrong of course I mean any of you British anime fan let me know since now that I'm living here I, I'm not sure I mean it's not there are store it's not that we have stores here in London I mean anime stores are stores in general are rare for anything not just anime which it's unfortunate of course but what can we do about it Another fantastic series, which I really, really love. Uh, Out, Outlaw Star. Amazing stuff. Again, uh, this is among my favorites. 
like, I don't know, Trigon in space, although a lot of people compare this to Cowboy Bebop, so maybe it's a mix between Trigon, Cowboy Bebop, but more goofy at times, which I like my goofy animes, even though, especially when you got the mix between goofiness and seriousness, which all of my favorite series have, I mean, Slayers is a prime example of that, Trigon, absolutely, um, Auto Star, Cowboy Bebop is more serious, I think, than this series. Uh, oh, I completely forgot about this. Speaking of Cowboy Bebop, we also got the movie. This is an interesting story, though, this specific one, because um, I got this from a magazine in Italy, because there was a magazine, it's still around, but it's nowhere near as relevant as it used to be with, like, old magazines, basically, again. The times are changing, as Bob Dylan says, but um, it's basically a sort of news, Italian Newsweek kind of thing. It's uh, very famous in Italy. And for the longest time, you can also buy movies together with the magazines. Like both my parents and I, we both have a lot of movies from that magazine, which was called Panorama, by the way. A little note of Italian trivia. And I remember once, I don't, rem I don't remember if I was already living here or in Italy. I think I was still in university in Italy. I remember I saw a commercial about, like, our next magazines were, were going to also include the movie Cowboy Bebop. And I was like, holy shit! So basically, I remember it was funny because I couldn't buy it. And it, this was limited, of course, in terms of, like, it's only for this week. So I begged my grandfather to buy it for me because it was the only one available because you always go to like the uh, the news store and stuff like that every day because you want to buy the newspaper and other magazines so i bought oh, please grandpa buy me this magazine it was like oh yeah sure whatever he had no idea what this movie was but i was so happy like thank you grandpa <laughs> great movie by the way if you like cowboy bebop obviously definitely watch the movie uh leo give it a shot i know you you like it, but you didn't love Cowboy Bebop. Try the movie. It's really, really cool. Oh, speaking of great movies. Oh, my God. Another... Uh, what, this is easily one of my favorite movies of all time in terms of anime. I think it was in my top five. I made a video a long time ago about my favorite anime movies. This was there because how can it not be in my top anime movies of all time? The gorgeous Metropolis by basically the grandfather of anime, Osamu Tezuka. Um, this is a very interesting thing, actually, because it's a combination of both the, the classic Fritz Lang Metropolis movie and a manga adaptation of it, even though it went its own way, by Tezuka. You combine the two, baby. You combine the two, and you got this amazing movie. It's one of the most gorgeous anime movie I ever saw in my life. Especially that that scene at one point after like the Maria counterpart, the Tika, I think Tima, who she basically just woke up and she's in this slum of Metropolis or in in this street, and she like look at the sky when there's this beam of light coming among the sky skyscrapers. I got like goosebumps. Like, oh my god, this scenery and animation it's absolutely gorgeous and breathtaking so fantastic fan fucking tastic movie metropolis and be sure if you watch it be sure to find the japanese end credit of this movie because for some reason and i think it was just a mistake they were cut from the western release because there is this really really brief scene that basically completely changes the ending because if you watch this, the ending is kind of sad, actually. But in that original ending, there is a beam of hope at the end. There is They show a picture which cha that changes everything to me. Speaking of great movies, Akira. Do I, need, do I need to say anything else? One of the greatest anime movies of all time. How can I not own Akira? I got this not... This is not in very good condition because it gives an idea how many times I've watched been through a lot from Italy to the UK, but legendary movie. Legendary. Uh, let's move to this. Half of the Eureka 7 series, one of my favorite mecha shows of all time. 
Fortunately, I don't have the entire collection because I bought these two in Italy, which are absolutely gorgeous box sets. As you can see, uh, very uncomfortable position. They also come with, I'm going to show you this, like this basically art books, in which it's absolutely amazing. You can see like drawings, like sketch of the characters, which Erika 7 has an amazing cast of characters. The world, like the world building in this series is phenomenal. Like the, the, like the mecha design. Fantastic stuff. Gorgeous collect box set. It wasn't very expensive in Italy because I, in, in my city there is this fantastic DVD store. Probably the best I ever found in the world. And I saw this like, oh my god, Eureka 7. And they only got these two. I re the last time I returned, I asked for the other two because I want to complete the series. Oh no, they're not going to do them anymore. Because probably they sold so poorly for something like this in DVD. So now I just only have half of the series. I was like, what the fuck? I want to see the rest of Eureka Sane because I absolutely love this half of what I saw. So I'll keep searching high and low for ideally two of these if they're not too expensive, but anything it's fine so that I can finish Eureka 7. Um, let's see. Okay, this again. Let's try to be fast about this. Studio Ghibli. Studio Ghibli. How can, of course, because that's in a way it's the entry point for anyone who wants to get into anime, I would say. Everyone loves Studio Ghibli. And how could you not? It's like one of anime's greatest treasure, in a way, by Miyazaki and, uh, oh, I don't remember his other name, but always loved Studio Ghibli. Let's start with, and I'll say, I'll try to be fast about this. Let's start with my favorite Studio Ghibli movie of all time. There's no comparison. This is by far my favorite. And uh, one of my favorite anime movie again. Top three, something like that, probably? Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, of course. Obviously. Absolutely my favorite. Love this. Love this. Next, we got my second favorite. La Putan, Castle in the Sky. Basically... A uh, very, very interesting segue from this, because not only to me this has a very strong Grandia feeling for all of you gamers watching this video, because it really reminds me of Grandia while I was watching this. But now that I watch another little series called Conan, the Future Boy, actually Future Boy Conan, there is so much of this series in here, or you can, you can say that series was a huge inspiration for this movie. Unfortunately, I don't own Future Boy Conan because that series is ridiculously expensive. I watched it, I love it, it's one of my favorite series of all time again, and I can see the huge role it played in the foundation of Studio Ghibli, because there are so many inspirations from that series to other movies, like the characters, the post-apocalyptic settings, the, the themes, the messages, really cool stuff so perfect recommendation watch future boy conan although it's from the 70s it holds up very well it's basically it's a studio ghibli series basically even though studio ghibli didn't exist at the time um how moving howl's moving castle fantastic again one of my favorites uh princess mononoke not naturally naturally totoro such an adorable movie. Adorable. Speaking of adorable, Kiki's Delivery Service, fantastic. Spirited Away, probably the most famous and most beloved, even though, yeah, it's... I, I, I love it, of course, but I prefer all these, the previous one, much more. Probably I would say the most underrated Studio Ghibli movie of all time, uh, Tale of Princess Kaguya. I would say this might be the most gorgeous looking Studio Ghibli movie, especially that scene when she's running through the, the bamboos or anything, it looks like a water painting, it's absolutely breathtakingly gorgeous, and the ending will like rip your out of because it's so tragic, with the really happy music and everything, but it's so, so tragic. While I was watching the movie, everyone in the cinema was crying basically, not me, but I was like, oh my god, this is torture. Um, Arietti, very, very nice. Oh, I love this. 
Porco Rosso, absolutely fantastic movie. I love all of this. The sort of like, if I remember, I haven't watched it in, in, in a long time. Because I, last time I saw it, I showed it to my brother and he loved it. And I remember, I love the idea of this sort of like airplane cemetery in the sky. This is such a fantastic movie. I love Porco Rosso. Um, Wind Rises, the Italian edition. The sort of like how you can say this in English? Oh boy, I can say in Italian but not in English. Like the a sort of like fictional biography, perhaps, of this engineer called Giro something. I don't remember his surname. Which is basically the engineer who created the legendary fighter, the Zero fighter during World War One. But it's such a nice story, fantastic, and it's the supposedly last movie directed by Miyazaki it was sort of his retirement movie. Really good. When Marnie was there, very very nice. The cat returns. And these two though, technically they're not Studio Ghibli, but they are associate with Studio Ghibli. We got the phenomenal Castle of Cagliostro. I love this. And this is an interesting one. Little Norse Prince uh, though the original title is different, oh, I, th I hope. Oh well, I don't know. This is this is really out of its time, really out of its time. I think it's something from the '60s, actually, and you can definitely tell it's still really cool. It's this amazing adventure, and it could have been I, mean, I, th I don't know, maybe explore better. But of course, considering that it's from such a long time ago. It's very impressive. It had a huge impact on anime. Really, really cool stuff. And that's my Studio Ghibli collection. And let's move on. What do we have here? So many stuff. Almost done. Uh, now, this is a very interesting one because of course how could I not have E's legacy the E's anime basically books one and two the anime really cool especially when you hear the game's music within the anime I was losing my shit basically um, animation wise and stuff like that it's maybe not incredible but I loved it really really nice um, I think it's pretty expensive now, I might be wrong because I haven't, of course I bought it, why should I check it, but if it's available and if you like Ease like I do, as I said, like it's one of my favorite gaming series, definitely this is a nice piece of Ease collection and that every fan should have. <coughs> uh, the Girl Who Left Through Time, really, really cool movie. What's the studio name? Oh, I cannot remember the name. Madhouse? I think, maybe? Kind of, sort of? Uh, anyway, it's a really interesting time travel movie. And I think this was the sort of debut of that studio, which might be the same of your name, perhaps? I, I don't remember, I don't know. Anyway, this is a good movie. If you haven't watched it, definitely give it a shot. Really, really good. Um, very unique stuff. Interstellar 5555. The, basically, you, what happens if you combine Leiji Matsumoto art with Daft Punk music? There you go. This is basically the... Oh, uh, what's the name of that album by Daft Punk? Ah, uh, I cannot remember now. Basically, the album, the album with One More Time. And it's basically all. If you if you remember the music video from the One More Time song, it's from this anime or vice versa. Anyways, it's just basically a music video as a movie with constant Daft Punk songs. Really unique, really really cool. The story of the Secret Star System with fives instead of s's. Clever. Love it. Really cool stuff. Very very unique. Um, do, do, do. This is also a very classic series. Oh, and I have another one over there because I want to 
get this together if I can move all this shit, all these DVDs. Alright, so it's gonna be a bit easier. Sorry about the noise, I'm dropping DVDs everywhere. Uh, as I said, very classic series that I believe in North America it was popularized by Toonami. However, um, it's a very important series also for Anya because I also think it's popularized very much. Well, not really, but it's famous for one of those harem kind of anime, but it also has all the sci-fi and the comedy. It's a classic. It's a super classic from the 90s, I dare say. I don't think it's from the... I don't think it's from the 80s. So yeah, it's from the 90s. Obviously, I'm talking about Tenchi Muyo. This is the original OVA series. Somehow, on the internet, I remember on Amazon, this was a robbery to get it. It was like... from 75 up in terms of prices, I found this in Italy for 6 euros. Or 5, it was like 1 or 2 euros per DVD or something, it was a steal. And it's super, super fun, I love the Tenchi series. And obviously, speaking of the original OVA series, they later did the series out of this Tenchi universe. Probably the best Tenchi series you can get, it's absolutely fantastic. I would say the first half is better than the second. When they go into space, I remember that I didn't like it as much, but it's like dropping from a 9 out to an 8 instead of reviews and grades, since we talk about that in a podcast. But uh, this is a super classic series. I love Tension Universe. A very unexpected series that I, I didn't... Ex let's, let's rephrase that. A series that I really didn't expect to like as much as I did, still on the Tenchi thing. It's Tenchi Muyo GXP. The Gal Galaxy Police is like... I don't think it's Tenchi himself. It's like a relative or something. Uh, Seina Yamada. Or someone maybe related or connected. I don't remember. The Tenchi universe is very complicated. Who is a rookie in, within the Galaxy Police, which takes a big part in the Tenchi series, of course. This is surprisingly really good. I really want to rewatch it now that I watch it, that I'm holding in my hand. Absolutely love the Tenchi series. Of course, it, the, the, the harem part plays a big role into it. But you got hilarious characters, funny moments. I mean, how can you not like Tenchi? Well, I didn't like War on Gaminar, for example, but. And last but not least, we got the, I think, the first Tenchi Muyo movie, Tenchi in Love. Tenchi Muyo in Love. Which, this is the most unique DVD I own, because it looks like this, it's fine, but in reality, it looks like a CD. But it, this is the DVD, actually. It looks like either a game or a CD. Never saw a DVD like this. I wish all DVDs were like this for fucking space reasons. Imagine that. I would have like a 3,000 DVD of there. I mean, it's... I would love it, but maybe luckily they're not like that. Because I would have a lot of DVDs in even more. Um, next, let's see. Uh, we got uh, Grenadier, the Beautiful Warrior. Again, very unique series. I don't want to say any hidden gem because not much of a gem. Even though I enjoyed it, but it's kind of like <sighs> guilty pleasure territory, kinda. I mean, it has like some edgy stuff to use anime terminology, but not too. It's not too much in my face, like fan service and stuff like that, which I'm. I don't care about it. Um, I like the setting, though, in this series. I mean, it, this is not a deep, complicated series at all, but um, I like the art. I, as I said, I like the setting. It's this mix between, like, the Wild West and Samurai, which everything with the Wild West got a plus for me. There are interesting characters. As I said, the art and animation, it's funny. So you got, like, this, the main character is this big-breasted blonde girl who is, like, she's an amazing gunslinger. And uh, the main character is this sort of like at times dumb samurai, but your typical sort of like uninteresting anime co 
protagonists or something, but I'm not doing this series very much justice. It's not bad at all. It's, it's nothing special, but uh, it's it's kind of charming in a way. I don't I don't mind Grenadier at all. <laughs> Absolutely, I actually like it. Oh my god, this series is so cool. Night Warriors or Dark Stalkers, the OVA series. I mean, Dark Stalkers as an anime. This is just perfection. Um, one of the things I constantly accuse Capcom of is the fact they completely abandoned the Dark Stalker series, which is my favorite fighting series, like fighting games of all time. I loved it. I was so good at playing at Dark Stalkers three. <coughs> None of my friends could keep up with me. I loved it, especially my favorite character, Hisenko. I love Dark Stalkers. This is a, gra a great series. I wish there was more of this. Sorry, because um, this is quite short. I think it might be six episodes, four episodes, or something like that. Probably six because it's like two DVDs. But um, the animation it's cool. It's Dark Stalkers. The setting and the characters are awesome, like always. If you like Dark Stalkers, definitely, definitely give this a watch. Still remember. The ending of this is absolutely epic. You got Donovan, it's kind of like the main character. This dude here, which is he has this huge sword, and at the end, he's like surfing on the, his sword in space. I was like, this is the coolest thing I ever saw. So, Dark Stalkers, Night Warriors, very, very cool. Um, Landlock, very unique, very never heard of this before I bought it. It's one of those like manga video. Things I don't really like. This is very interesting. As I said, I never heard of this before I bought it. And it's kind of forgettable. It's nothing spectacular. But it definitely gets a pass. Because, of course, the thing that caught my attention is this little sentence in here. Oh, it's Shiro Mazamune. So, of course, I need to check it out. And it was like for two pounds, maybe even less. It was next to nothing. I... I mean, what's the harm in that? It's pretty cool. The only thing is that I wish this was a series. This is like a movie. And it's all about like magic, martial arts, and stuff like that. So I, I haven't watched it in a while now because I say it's not that spectacular. So it's not that I'm really rushing to rewatch this. But it's pretty cool and very, very unique. If you're looking for cheap, weird stuff, give it a shot. It's pretty cool, actually. Uh, let's see. Oh, boy, boy, boy. We're getting into deep stuff here. Now, where is the other one? They're all mixed. Speaking, well, getting back to Leiji Matsumoto one more time, which is always a good thing to do. We got, naturally, Galaxy Express 999, the movie. Uh, one of the greatest anime movies of all time, potentially. Really cool stuff, very depressing, very somber, very sad, but absolutely amazing. Also got the sequel, Adieu Galaxy Express. It's called like uh, Capolinea Andromeda. I don't remember this much though. I need to rewatch it because of course this is something you don't forget. You don't you don't forget you don't forget Galaxy Express 99. The sequel was not as I didn't remember that much of it. But anyways, I remember that I love it because it's Galaxy Express. I don't remember much of it, but whatever. <laughs> And I do remember most of this, much, much more of this. Space Symphony Made Hell. This series is basically a prequel to the Galaxy Express movies. Of course, I cannot stress enough the phenomenal art by Leiji Matsumoto. It's, it's just incredible. This guy is like a master. Of course he is, I know, but it's always good to remember like the big, the big dogs of animation. Um, all right, this is a unique one, Yosokura Quartet. Um, there's much more which I don't own of this, and it's all the good stuff. This is kind of average slash mediocre, because Yosokura Quartet. I really enjoy the manga. I read it occasionally throughout the years, and I liked it very much. It's very unique. And it's a lot of fun. A bit too much fan service for my taste, but it's fine. It's one of those shonen kind of thing. Um, I'm a big, big fan of the 
artist of this, the creator of Yuzukura Quartet, which is Suzuhiro Yasuda, who has also been involved several t several times in character design in video games. For example, he did the art of the characters in the Devil Survivor games on the DS, the Shin Megami Tensei. He did the art in something else, in the Digimon Hacker something game on PS4, I don't know if it's on PS3 as well, but really, really enjoy this guy's art. And uh, this series, the problem is that it deviates quickly from the manga and tries to create its own conclusion, which was kind of a big letdown. It's not bad, but knowing that the manga is much better, it's kind of disappointment. However, I saw also like a sort of second chances they gave to the series, which is very interesting. I, I didn't know that things happened. So basically there is two OVA series and another full series of Yuzukuro Quartet. You got the um, Hoshi no Umi OVA series, the Hana no Uta series, and the Tsuki ni Naku uh, OVA series. So you can also enjoy my horrible Japanese here. <laughs> um, those, in, on the other hand, are really good and more close to the source material. So definitely check that out. Speaking of a sort of a letdown, Bakuretsu Hunter. Um, I was expecting so much more from this series. It's nice, but it never... It always, to me, this series always was stuck on like second gear or something. I was hoping for much more in the second half of the series. Because sometimes it's like 24 episodes, like the first half is like introdu introducing the characters and stuff like that. And the second half you really got the good action and all of that. Mm, not so much in here. Um, it's not bad, but it's mm, it's not really my cup of tea with this series, which is interesting because it's again it's from the '90s. It's like goofy and but you don't have the seriousness. You got like an episode here and there which are more serious, but I want a bit more because if it's all goofiness and all sort of light fan service, it's not much. Uh, we're almost done, incredibly enough. Uh, almost. Oh, there's still some things, but I'm trying to speed up. Um, got the entire Witch Hunter Robin series. Very, very cool. Although a bit slow at times, but I like its slowness and pacing and dark overtone in a way. But it's a very interesting series. I wish there is a bit more of it, actually. Because I like the lore and the world of it. But... Maybe just I think that's the only complaint that I have. It's a bit too short, even though it's like 26 episodes. But this could easily have more series, I think. And the animation it's kind of mixed to me. Sometimes it's a bit it's okay, and others not so much. But I think the main problem for people is that it's very at times it's very slow, and it's a bit different from usual. And I like the sort of magic and mystery kind of thing. So it's a cool series. Again, I bought this from next to 12 euros in Italy, which is like 2 euros per DVD. So how can I say no? This is a classic from the early 2000, I think, by Sunrise. Well, anyway, really cool series, Winch on the Robin. Speaking of very cool, got this amazing riding being. Speaking of Kenichi Sonodas, I mentioned him for Gal Force. This is a sort of like different take on Gunsmith Cat because you got Being Bandit, this dude here, who is like a very important character in the series. And this movie is fantastic, I love it. Just like Gunsmith Cats, it takes place in the 80s in Chicago, so you got all this 80s vibe. And Kenichi Sonoda is a gun freak, he loves guns, so he puts so much attention and details to the guns in this in his series. It's so cool. And this is a fantastic movie. If you haven't watched it, this is a huge recommendation. Gotta have a Fate series. Um, only one of them. And we got the original Fate Stay Night. A fantastic series, however. One of the best, still, to me, Fate series. It does not have the fantastic art of Fate Zero and Unlimited Play work, because uh, UFO Table was not involved with this yet. But I think it has a great story, the classic fake characters, 
Although lately this has been this has serious competition from Apocrypha in my from personal taste of course. And I would love to own Fate Apocrypha on DVD, but I I couldn't find it so far. And Fate Zero, I mean all the Fates DVD are super expensive or expensive, consider what they are. I think Fate Zero in particular. Uh, I watch all of them because I love Fate, and it all started from the classic Stay Night. So, really cool series, love it. Speaking of cool series that I love, another classic from the '90s has to be Irresponsible Captain Taylor. Love, love, love this. Absolutely, this should probably be my favorite animes of all time, or around that area, because it's an absolute classic and an absolute must. Got also got the OVAs that kind of concludes the anime series, although it concludes, it doesn't really finish, it, it kind of ends on a cliffhanger, because this whole series is like the fight between the humans and the lagoons, I think they're called, these al humanoid aliens, um, and all of a sudden you discover, oh, there's a third party involved, so I was hoping that, oh, maybe the humans and the lagoons are going to join to fight this new threat, and it never got resolved. I don't know if there are like visual novels or uh, something else, but uh, that's all I got and I absolutely love it, especially the series. The OVAs are a nice addition to it if you want to be, if you want to see more Taylor. just want to show some of the art. Absolutely, absolutely a must series. Cannot stress it enough. <laughs> and I love this cast of character, it's unforgettable. Next, one of my personal favorite series of all time, again. Love, love, love this since I was very young. Escaflone, of course. Probably my favorite shows in, show involving Mecha. And one of the, my favorite shows animation wise even though now it's a bit I don't want to say dated because it holds up it holds up incredibly well considering it's from what 95 96 maybe 96 but the character design it's just like you got to see Van Hitomi yeah Hitomi and the Escaflone itself probably my favorite mech of all time you got all these amazing characters the story it's epic and the the final battle in Escaflone might be, so Durando there, might be the best final battle in anime history to me. It's just incredible with that, the the, the Escaflone fighting the Sherazard with that amazing epic music. It's oh, it's so cool. And speaking of Escaflone, obviously also have the movie, which is basically again a condensed and slightly different version of the series, but with a movie budget. And it's very cool. It's a very, very, very cool movie. Love it because I love Escaflone so much. So uh, five. Just wanted to keep things kind of organized. Uh, we're almost done. Last bunch, kind of last bunch, two bunches of DVDs. Um, only he owned half of this series, which is Chaika, the Coffin Princess, and this has become. Uh, this is a new love of mine. Absolutely love it. It's no surprise, it's from the same guy who did Scrap Princess, one of my favorite series of all time. Fantastic dark fantasy series. I only have, as I say, half of the season of the series. I saw all of it, of course, but I really wanted complete series in DVD so I can rewatch it. Especially because the second half is amazing, and amazingly, there's a huge, cool twist there. But again, the world building is phenomenal, the characters are unforgettable, especially these three. We got Toru, uh, Akari, and Chaika. Chaika probably is one of an anime character with the cutest and most adorable way of talking. It's very, very weird and unique and just adorable. Excellent series. I wish there's more of this to explore more characters. That's the only slight problem that I have with the series. Some other secondary characters are not as developed as they should have been. Especially like the Red Chaika team. They're interesting, but I wanted to know more about them. Um, oh boy, we got a big trio of movies, trio of movies here. Let's start with Wings of Onianis, of course, one of the 
fantastic movie. Absolutely amazing. The animation is phenomenal. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Gynax basically went bankrupt for this movie, but it's totally worth it. I mean, it's unforgettable. Absolutely amazing. This movie had a ginormous budget, and uh, it flopped. Absolutely flopped on the box office. But it's incredible. Everyone should watch The Wings of Onyanis. It's just amazing. Next, by, oh, what's his name? It doesn't matter. Uh, sorry, it was just because these are from the same guy, but I cannot remember the name. I was looking for it. You got Venus War, fantastic sci-fi war story on Venus, as the title implies. Really cool. For any sci-fi fans, this is an absolute must. I think Johnny Millennium loved this movie. And rightly so. And of course, we got the big dog here, of course. Arion. The funny thing is, this movie has not been released in North America yet, and yet we got it in Italy. So, if you understand Italian and want to see Arion, definitely, because this movie is fucking amazing. Cannot recommend this enough. This sort of reimagination of Greek mythology. Amazing movie. Amazing movie. Last bunch, last bunch, we're almost there. We're starting with, I mean, we're going deep into the shelf here. Start with Steam Boy. Basically, this was made by the same guy who did Akira. I cannot remember his name now. It's a really cool and unique movie. I think, again, this was a kind of disappointment in the box office. But it's very cool, the technology, the world, like this whole Steam Boy, Steampunk, Steam Boy, the Steampunk technology, it's so amazing. It's always cool. So, highly recommend it. A very, very cool action movie with a lot of Steampunk. Because how can you not love Steampunk? Uh, Summer Wars. I remember Leo recently saw this. He talked in depth in one of the podcasts we did, so definitely check that out. A uh, very cool and unique movie again. Really, really nice. Uh, let's go with Bleach. I don't own nothing in terms of this series, but I decided to, because back in the day I was a big fan of Bleach before I completely dropped the series. And of course I have to have at least the movies. The original, Memories of Nobody, and the excellent, Diamond Dust Rebellion and Fade to Black. These are really cool. Highly recommend this. Uh, Memories of Nobody is interesting, but it's clearly the inferior one. And I still need to watch the fourth one, like the Hell verse, the Hell chapter or something. Which I was very disappointed because I was hoping that like the final arc in Bleach was going to take place in Hell, or at least that version of Hell. But instead we got the shitty Quincy stuff. Oh my god. Uh, Ninja Scroll, a classic, very mature stuff. Highly recommend it. Really cool. And finally, the last box that I have, we ended up on a down note, actually, because I, this is not a very good series. There's a reason why it's the final one. Wild Arms the Anime. I love Wild Arms. It's one of my favorite RPG series. But this anime, it's very cool. The animation, it's nice, but it's nothing special. But it's cool that there is a Wild Arms anime. Like, the more Wild Arms the, we have, the better, of course. So if it's not expensive, you love Wild Arms and you're curious about it, give it a shot. It's not bad. It's simply not as good as I want it. And there we have it. Oof, I'm tired. Talk too much for my grand return video, whatever. So hopefully, I, I realize this is a very super long video, but I wanted to do it at least once. What the hell? Um, especially for all of you anime fans, so definitely let me know what you think about this collection, if you want to share, if you have any idea, any intention of doing some sort of video response to this, be my guest, I'm more than happy to check it out. So, this is it for me, definitely... <coughs> Sorry, as I said, I talk too much, I think that's the cue to stop blabbling about. Thanks so much for watching, guys, I'll see you next time, and take care.